Hello, hello, good morning, and uh, happy uh, 4th of July if you're celebrating. Uh, I'm probably not going to stream too long. It's, um, it's, uh, I, have a, I have a bunch of stuff that we're going go to go do today, and uh, uh, therefore can't, can't spend like half the day streaming like, uh, like sometimes I do on, on like weekends or something like that. Um, so I was looking through, uh, well, I could, actually, I updated a little bit yesterday in the afternoon. Um, I worked on setting up GitHub Actions for uh, uh, our web app. Oh, I also figured out, well, figured out is maybe a too strong of a word. I also did an update for Pulumi that I wasn't able to get the uh, policy working for S3 bucket to get... Uh, uh, CloudFront access to it. So I ended up giving up on that and just manually attaching the policy uh, through the console. And that worked just fine. So then I went on to GitHub Actions. Uh, everything was working except the deploy. And the de only reason the deploy wasn't working was because this is happening to it. It's just waiting for a runner to pick up this job. And I'm a little bit confused as to like why consistently this is happening. Uh, linting seems to run just fine. Uh, so not fully sure why like my deploy doesn't work. So I'll keep an eye on this and maybe, maybe eventually it'll run. Um, let's see. And then the other thing is, all right. So the last little pit bit of this is want to set up, um, I want to set up a uh, metric gathering for uh, for this. Now, what that really means is I just want to know which browser is being used when you uh, navigate to uh, to this web app. Uh, so I want to see whether or not I can actually get access to uh, the user agent in the front end. Because if I can, then I'll just you know use that and then hit our API and then say like, hey, this is is the user agent we're using uh, I, I figured that will be that'll be easy enough for uh, uh, for like basic metric gathering type things so uh, what I want to do let's pull up all of this stuff here's the platform web thing Um, okay, so I want to start us up. Platform web, this is good. Let's do a trunk serve. All right, so here's our here's our lovely web app so far. Um, let's see what I can get uh, location-wise. My other choices would be potentially to grab this out of um, logs from CloudFront. But they might they might be able to tell me something. It's actually something I didn't even consider looking into. Um, all right, let's uh, let's see. I want to, okay, so user agent uh, browser, see if MDN has anything for me on this. I love, I love this. Warning, please read browser detection using the user agent for why serving different web pages or services to different browsers is usually a bad idea. Um, totally agreed. Uh, I am not gonna be using this for um, uh, for determining, like for actually like sending different content out. Although that would be hilarious if I did that for like some different page or something like that. Uh, 
Okay, so the syntax, we have this product, uh, product version, and then the comment. Just showing this here, examples. Where can I find it? Where, what's the command I use to get it? See, everybody supports it. Oh, the user agent request header is a character. Okay, so it's a header. Um, uh, Yash, hello. It's request header. And a versioning of the requesting user agent. Okay, so I wonder if I can. Okay, so for example, if I come back to here. Me make sure that nothing is exposed that's strange on it. So I hit reload. And I'm guessing I'll just get fetch the fetch slash on it, maybe. Um, headers, user agent, okay, Mozilla. Macintosh, Intel, Mac, okay, nothing, nothing crazy on this. So I do see this here. Uh, I wonder in the DOM, is there is there anything that like extracts this out? Mm, no, so okay. So it's gonna be on a request. So when a request happens, I can maybe get access to it, but uh, how would I do that without making? I guess what I need to do is create something like a Lambda function or something like that, that I can then hit. So that way it'd be cheap because it's a Lambda function. It, you, you don't get charged unless it's being hit. Uh, so it just sleeps for most of the time. Uh, we then hit it. Uh, it then reads the headers, and that way I can get the user agent. That makes that makes sense to me. So like, log user agent would be maybe the um, maybe what we're what we're gonna do here. Uh, let's see. So the only thing I can sort of like think of right away for doing myself, as opposed to like pulling in the full Google, um, it's like, I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of like the Google, uh, bringing in Google everything and letting them own all the websites. And might be interesting to sort of see. So we have those builds. Okay, we have uh, infrastructure and platform. I wonder if I want to create a new, okay, so new folder in here. So this would basically be a new app. Um, if I call this like log user agent. Now, it would be nice if I could set up, uh, if I could, if I could do something like have, oh, you know what we were thinking of doing? We were thinking of having a single backend running Axum. And 
and I can put that onto either an EC2 instance or I can throw it up onto uh, ECS Fargate, uh, which might, that might be better. If I put it onto ECS Fargate, then it would store that and I can have it log directly to uh, SEC or we can throw it into a database. Okay. So I want to create a, um, I want to create an Axum web server. I want to create a sec. It's probably a, probably a sec. Um, SEQ is, is what I'm saying there. Uh, logging service. And we'll end up putting that onto EC, EC2. So that'll be the next thing we build with infrastructure. In the meantime, however, we can set up what uh, the Axum locally and get that working. And as long as we have that working inside of Docker, we still have the option of using something like uh, ECS or going straight to EC2. All right, so uh, log user agent, so really, I want this to rename. Uh, I'm gonna want this to be our sort of like the platform backend. I might even rewrite this later. Um, but okay, let's. All right, let's get the latest version of Rust because uh, we've had an update. All right, um, let's see, we're in the platform backend. We're going to do a cargo in it. Uh, there we are all set up for everything. Um, uh, we are going to initialize, we're gonna create a Axum server. Which I forget how to spin up. Okay, so the hello world of Axum. So we'll probably start with a hello world. So we'll need Axum. All right, looks like, oh, headers is a feature that's not, huh, headers. I wonder if that is something to get headers or set headers or both. HTTP2 could be interesting too. Uh, Molter and multi-part could be, could be fun in the future. Oh, and web sockets are built in here too. So these, what I'm looking at is down here, these are the features that aren't installed, these features are given to me already. So that's interesting. Um, Vanta, hello. Um, what I'm building is a, uh, this is gonna be just a general backend that my front end is going to use. Uh, the first route that we're gonna build for it is a essentially like log the user agent route. So basically something that can hit uh, it'll grab the user agent out and then send to a logging system, which we also have to set up. 
So that's not set up either yet. Um, but all right, so we just we're gonna use Axum for this. We haven't decided exactly where to deploy this either. Uh, my thoughts right now are it, it's between just EC2 and just running a whole bunch of Docker containers on there or uh, setting up ECS. And um, I mean, okay, so I have a choice of I can run EC2 by itself and we just manually configure it and run it. We can have ECS and EC2, and then have ECS run, you know, everything, all the Docker containers for me. Uh, or finally, we can have ECS and run Fargate, um, which is an interesting idea because we get 66% off of the EC2 instances spun up behind the scenes for us if we use Fargate. Uh, I would have to do a pre, like a two-year pre-purchase of an EC2 instance to um, to get that that uh, a discount. So interesting things. I might I might even want to do that just to see what the cost was and then keep my eye on it. Eye on it. But uh, th those are future problems. Right now we just want to get this set up, and then once we have that set up, then we can talk about deploying it. All right, um, what is this? What's going on? Um, I don't think I need any of those features right away. Uh, although headers, I might want to. Um, let's see, then I want to, let's take a look at this. Okay, so we need to use Tokyo main. Right, I think we need to bring in Tokyo too. Uh, yeah, work with Tokyo. So you can see with Tokyo, all the features are turned off. Uh, we can turn it on full. Um, and macros, do I need, oh, and Tokyo macros. Kind of wish that uh, crates had a really easy way to like, like put aside, um, put over here like the list of the features, and then also like have a little bit of blurb about like what is this feature? Why do you want it? Uh, what is it going to give you? I don't like. I could give it a full. Oh wait, okay. So here's theirs. They, we just have to like rely upon the library putting this in. So it was all features. Um, okay, macros enables Tokyo main and Tokyo test. Okay, so I need macros at the very least. So if I remember correctly, we're gonna do Okay, so it's dash capital F features and then space or comma separated list of features. Okay. And it is macros. And that adds in macros for us, and then I can I could basically do this again, it will just continue to update and add the macros. Add, add the, whatever features I need in. And we can see now. 
uh, macros and Tokyo macros are added. So super nice. Okay, so we're gonna do this Tokyo main. Async function main, uh, it does the thing we want to do. Okay, so back to axum. So we have you, async function main. Uh, we're gonna create a new router. So I want to do that in maybe a library here. And this gives us a function for what we're going to hit. OK, and then I can just create handler like this somewhere else. Maybe I'll call it like app. And are you async? You probably are gonna be async. Yeah, because it's service bind. Unless I put that into main. Uh, let's see, server, axiom server bind, the address, the port, serve, okay, app into make service, await, unwrap. Okay, yeah, yes, this app, this app is definitely gonna be async here. Uh, you're not necessarily gonna take anything in and this is gonna return this router new. So it's gonna be something router new I'm in a workspace, this might... So previously, workspaces have been working for me. Okay, there we go. Now, now we're happy again. So, yeah, router. Um, async, you're unhappy. Async is a keyword from the 2018 edition onwards. It's available for use in st stable Rust. Wait, am I not using the right version? Yeah, 2021. Oh, is it just because I'm not using it? Oh, pub must come before async. That's why. So pub async function. There we go. Uh, all right, so we have router new. Um, then we create a route. Um, okay, so our path. So that would essentially be slash. Let's um, like log user agent. 
our service. And then we can just do this get. Um, and then a handler. So that's gonna be a function that we call into here. So I don't know if I want this to be handlers or something else. Uh, I could create them in here right now and then sort of move them out as soon as I know where I want them to go. So function um, log user agents handler. You return nothing necessarily. Okay, this is a router. that uh, you need a specific type to not just be a placeholder um, what exactly are you HTTP body is not satisfied okay. I was hoping I could create the router and do that easily, but you're you're unhappy. It wants me to specify the associated types. Data type, error type, okay. It's actually gonna be a lot easier for me than just do everything inside of here and then call app. That will that'll be a lot easier. So let's uh let, let's do that. Um, I don't know if I need error handling or not, so I'm going to go back to this one. Okay, so we have route. We do you. Um, so we let... Let's rename this to run. Be happy again. The trait bound function log user agent handler is not satisfied. So you need to be something else, which. Oh, you need to be async. There we go with you. Type annotations needed for router. Uh, but I think that might figure it out automatically when I start doing this. So we're gonna do the Axum server bind. Okay, so address. Uh, I'm gonna want this to be probably that uh, 000. I'll just go with this right now and then we'll we'll probably want to bring in port like um, environment variables. So parse unwrap. Interesting, so you wanna do a parse unwrap and then reference that then we do a dot serve make service okay so app into make service app dot into make service 
Uh, we await. And then unwrap. Okay, you seem to be happy. Don't need you. Then in main, um, I want, okay, so this async function main, I want to pull in app. Yeah, platform backend. Uh, what can't I find you? Your pub of run. Come on, show me the air. Fine problems. Um, the run, the default runtime flavor is multi-thread, but the RT multi-thread feature is disabled. Okay, so I need the RT multi-thread feature. Oh, I was hoping I can like select this and No, that's not helpful. Oh, there it goes, okay. No, come on, select just that thing. There's that RT multi-thread, so now, okay, so macros, and that. Feature macros must be qualified by the dependency it's being activated for, like Tokyo macros, RT multi-thread macros. Okay, so I want actually then, like that. Feature macros activated for create RT multi-thread, but the create wasn't specified. Oh, wait, do I need to quote this? Create should be Tokyo, right? Um, or maybe, do I need macros and then something else? Macros. Huh, interesting. RT multi-thread macros macros? What? So wait, okay, so macros, do I want Tokyo slash macros like that? Oh, that, okay. Then probably like this. There we go. Now I have now I have these two in here, uh, which makes you happy. This all seems to be working. Uh, let's see if we can get this running. Cargo run. Uh, well, I, I guess I want this to also do something special. So um, can I, if I log, I think it appears on the local console. So let's try a, um, let's try a local log here. So we'll do a debug.
I want it to be accessed. But not necessarily by outside my computer, so I'm not exactly sure what my well, I can fix that later. Okay, so now can I hit you with Thunder Client? And just say go to localhost. 3000, I'd just do get like that. Right, 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 because we, we have this log user agent as the route. Hey, there we go, okay. So I get access to that. So now I want to read the uh, the headers for this. Okay, so feature flags. I do need the features for headers. Enables extracting typed headers via typed header. Okay. So I need headers. Is that gives me headers now. I'm in platform back end. Okay, and then typed header. Okay, so I'm going to take in a typed header. Oh, just like this, user agent. Um, typed header user agent, which actually is a type that's provided to us by headers. Okay, nice. That's kind of exactly what we're looking for. So inside of here, we're going to take in the headers, which is a typed Oh, interesting. Okay. So it's it's a little bit weird the way this works. I'm gonna do a typed header. And then the type here is typed header singular. I can't find it. Um, and then user agent like that. Uh, but I need to tell it probably where to find this because it's not going to know what this is. Uh, now user agent is is here for me, so I can maybe debug. Okay, where do you come from? You come from just Axum typed headers and then headers user agent, okay? Let's so use Axum. Okay, so I told you to add, uh, we're in the platform backend. That didn't do it. Okay, I need headers.
Oh, you're so you're so unhappy. Failed to select a version for Tokyo. Oh, the pla the the package platform backend depends on Tokyo with features headers, but Tokyo does not have these features. So zero five eleven. Oh, because I was adding it to Tokyo. Well, that's my problem. No wonder it didn't do that. Uh, okay, so I need to do a uh, cargo add axum dash f headers. Okay, Axum added headers here. Uh, once again, oh, save. There it goes. Okay, now you're added in here. Now I bet things are gonna start working a little bit better for us. Uh, okay, you're all happy. Oh, I don't want you to have headers. Save you. There we go. So added the feature to the wrong crate. Okay, so I have, okay, you're running. New request. Great, okay, so that doesn't work exactly the way I was expecting it to. Uh, lovely. I kind of expected that to work the way that the other like format works or something. So I think, actually I just do this. All right, we can see it's Thunder Clan. Thunder Clan was the one who sent this request. Uh, and then I can do this with a browser also. Grab you. And there we can see, okay, it's a Mozilla. Um, so essentially Firefox and it's on a Mac and we see the version number, okay. So if I just take this entire line, uh, I can then save this off to logging. Before I do that, I want to get this at least prepared for, for deploying out. So we, wanted, we want to wrap all of this inside of a Docker container or a Docker image, uh, as it were. So in our platform backend, we want a new file. Docker file. So from, let's do Rust latest. Okay, when we run this, um, for dev mode, I actually want this to have a a volume, but I can I can see us wanting to just sort of like add this in once and then go from there too for like deployment. Purposes. 
I could see that being an ad then. That would be a new build every single time that we, we change the code. So maybe I want two Dr. Prowls, one for Dev, one for, um, I could just dev locally and then this would be deployment docker file. Might be best to like have it on both, right? So. Because yeah, for develop for deployment purposes, I absolutely want to do an add. So if I do like an add source destination, our uh, this would be well, because we have a target here too. I wonder if I want it to like build on the server when it's running like that too. Hmm. Um, let's do. Okay, so the source is going to be just this SRC. Um, destination is going to be slash. Um, I guess we can override the command when we run it locally for development purposes. That could work too. Uh, let's put this into slash code. So I'm, I'm, I have some I have some curiosities of like how how this will work um, and whether or not we'll like override and like destroy stuff in my computer for do, doing it doing it uh, a certain way. Uh, okay, so arguments. Um, so you can use variables. I don't think I need those. These are defaults. Don't necessarily need those right now. Um, unless I can do like if statements in the build. Uh, okay, so the command. Uh, we're gonna want to do a uh, cargo run. Um, I probably actually want to do the cargo watch command. So cargo watch. Well, okay, if this is for development purposes, I just want this to be cargo run. Environment variables. Uh, we don't have any right now, but we're gonna want to add them in eventually. Uh, I'll just sort of keep those in mind. Expose what port we're going to be on. So we can expose port 3000 for our server. This. Um, I guess we can have our ENV. So we're going to have a uh, port 3000. So we could do this, uh, health check. Um, okay, so interval, sure. 30 seconds is fine for this. Uh, timeout 30 seconds, start period five seconds. Uh, retries three, command. Okay, so the command, I think that's something like how we want the shell dash S dash C, I think. Um, and then I want to essentially curl. Do I have curl inside of uh, uh, Rust? Let's find out.
Um, all right, so if you haven't used Docker before, it's really cool technology. So I'm gonna use uh, docker run dash dash rm basically removes this container, so deletes and removes it um, as soon as I'm done with it. Uh, IT so I can connect in locally. I wanna go into port, Uh, I want. I don't think I need anything else necessarily. I just want to check to see if we have curl installed. So we're gonna go into Rust latest and override the command with a bin bash. And so here we are inside of a container. Uh, and so I can now do a curl. Um, yeah, we do have a curl. Okay. We can curl. Um, uh, John Will, hello. Uh, the IT command is for attaching, so I for interactive, and then the T for TTY. So it allows me to connect my current TTY to the Docker container and then also makes it interactive. So it's essentially as if I'm SSH'd into it. Uh, it's one of, it's one of the like, um, most common things to do, especially when you're like figuring out what you want to like build in it, allows you to inspect inside the Docker container and sort of like poke around and see what's going on. So essentially, this is my computer. It's not a VM, but it's kind of sort of acting like one. So if I CD slash, uh, it, this is a different, you know, a different computer's, um, a different like sort of systems. Uh, directory. It's most likely Ubuntu. I haven't looked to see what uh, Rust uses. You've been using Exec. Is it new? Nope. It's uh, it's there forever. Um, I think so. Exec is what you use after it starts running, I believe. Yeah. So like once once it's there, I then can connect to it with Exec. So if I open up another window here. I can do a Docker PS. Uh, here is that one. It's wizardly pasture. So I can do a Docker exec uh, wizardly pasture slash uh, bin bash. Um, do I need a dash I too? Uh, Docker exec uh, options container. So, oh, dash I for interactive. Oh, I need the dash I and T for this too. Okay. So I need the dash I and T for, for both of them, for exec and uh, for um, just like run. So I'm not, I'm not sure what exact oh wait are you using docker compose because in docker compose you don't need the it i believe all right i need to remember how to use curl to hit something i guess we can have a health check so we should add in a health check in here so let's do a async Function I'll check. Now, something interesting about health checks is I want it to essentially fail if, like, the, if something else is failing. Oh, dash ti is what you've been using there too. Don't use it often. Okay, yeah. So dash ti dash it doesn't really matter what order they're in. It's exactly the same thing. So you have to, um, so the uh, the thing to sort of like know is uh, Docker run is for spinning up a brand new container uh, from scratch. So it's like, it's not been run before it's, it's stopped. And then exec is to run a command in a Docker uh, container that's already running. Both are very, very good.
yeah, like get, get it, being able to get into the Docker container to see like what the heck is going on here, uh, just to find out that like oh we forgot to add the volume in or, or something like that is uh, is is pretty good to know. Um, okay, so can I do man curl, um, curl manual? Oh, I could do that. All right, just want the basic commands for it. Oh, come on. Um, I'm guessing that bat isn't installed by default in, no. Uh, so we'll do less. Less is not installed. Page, more. Okay, more more is installed. Um, okay, so curl whatever options we have and then slash URLs. Okay, so I want a get request and I just want to see that it's up. If not told otherwise, curl writes the received data to standard out. It can be instructed to instead save the data to local file. So I don't want to do any of that stuff. I want to be quiet. Just give me a 200 if you successfully find something. So is there like a dash Q? Ah, HTTP, a uh, fail silently, no output at all on server errors. This is mostly done to better enable scripts to better deal with failed attempts. Okay, so I want a dash F. Is that, okay. Oh, back doesn't work. Uh, previous? I can only go forward. I should probably just use a um, web browser for this and go on and look at it. Uh, I think there's. Okay, let's just let's just imagine that there's a dash Q. So I would want a curl, like dash. I can't remember if it's dash capital F or lowercase f, and then maybe like a Q also for quiet, and then we're gonna go to like, um, HTTP p colon slash slash local host port 3000 something like this right interesting okay So no matter what, even with the dash F, uh, capital F maybe, to make it fail silently. Um, okay, but that seems to be the general idea of what we're gonna do here. So for my Docker file, we want a curl uh, dash F. I don't know if there's a queue that I really care about here. Uh, and then I want to go to cp slash localhost uh, port 3000. And that should tell me, okay, if it's up or not, that should, that should be good. Let's see, run. I don't know if I need to install anything. It might just work. Um, 
I guess one run because I'm doing the add here. Oh, curl dash f is to support form data apparently. Oh, interesting. Okay, so it, ta it changed the type of data being passed in, probably from like JSON to form x URL form encoded or whatever. Okay, so run command. Um, we can do a cargo install. Um, shell, whatever shell is the default is probably fine. Uh, user, okay, volume. So volume of slash code would be nice. Uh, and then, oh, finally, workter, so slash code. So order of this stuff is really important. Uh, workter needs to happen before any of like the run type things. All right, so let's go over this again. So we say from Rust latest, um, add, add this entire directory into, into the code here. So that's source to code, uh, expose port 3000, set, this environment okay set this environment variable port and set equal to 3000 uh health check um run this as the health check uh our working directory is slash code um run so essentially cd into slash code run cargo install um set this as a volume let's do that up here and then the command when the um, the not so like the command by default if I run the contain the, the image is to just do cargo run which should then start the server up and then five seconds later it should check to see if it's healthy by seeing if it can find I really want something like health check something like that. Um, which means I can actually see it fail the health check. Uh, so let's not do that right away. Let's see if I can get this running and like fail a health check. I would, um, think that might be interesting. Okay. So I'm going to exit out of view that deletes the container. So I don't need to clean it up. Uh, we're going to do a, uh, Docker build dash T um, I'll do this as like my my named account so Berserker uh, this will be platform backend that's also interesting that um it is, well, I guess like, I guess this is all open source. So there's not really a like sort of a, a problem with this. Like somebody's spinning up a copy of this. Um, okay, so then dot. Slash code is not a create root. Oh, I copied all of source in, but I'm missing all of these things. Okay. So I can't just add in source. I need cargo lock. So let's add in cargo.toml. Can I, I wonder if I can do this and if it will override a code. Um, yeah, let's, let's try that. I can also add dot. Okay, so I can do dot.
I wouldn't really want to transfer in target though, normally. Using cargo install to install the binaries for the package in current working directory is no longer supported. Oh wait, I don't want to use cargo install. Hold on. I'm gonna use cargo uh cargo build. And then normally I'd want to use cargo build release too, just to have like all the release stuff uh, built out for it, sort of ready to go. So here it goes. It is building this. Now, anything that happens here is not going to affect the target in here because I copied this entire directory into the Docker container. So, or I, I guess like into the image. Uh, so now I can spin up in containers from that image and they all have this sort of like platform from when I, when I built it, which is great, but for development purposes, that's not necessarily going to work out for me. Because if I want to make a change to it, I now need to do this entire thing again, which is not fast. Also, this is taking forever for it to just update and create so that I out index. Okay, there it goes with everything else. So you might also notice that um, this was significantly faster when I just ran it on my computer on its own. Uh, oh, that wasn't too slow. Okay, so the image was built now. So I can now run. So I can do a Docker run. Um, we're gonna say, I'm not gonna do a dash I or a T. Okay, we're gonna use dash dash RM again. Um, so I want dash p so link local ports let's say 3001 to port 3000 inside i'm not going to put a volume or anything else in there i want to use the one that's in there already uh and we're going to say do brook zerker uh platform backend um latest and that's it use whatever whatever thing you've been told Oh, you know what? Oh, my command is docker run, but I built it. Did I do a build? I didn't build it as a release. Okay, good. So the docker run, so it's running the pre-install, the pre the pre-packaged things. So that, that's awesome. So that's why it's super fast now uh, to start up, which means also I can come I'm interested now in like the health checks. Like, is this going to fail after 30 seconds because the health check fails? Cause I could, I would imagine the health check should kill this, this Docker container, even though technically this is up and running on port 3001. So while we're waiting for that, let's go to 3001. We'll hit that. There we go. There's our Thunder Client. So that's all working. Yeah. So health is starting. Uh, so it hasn't, the health check hasn't. Uh... Okay, so it's in an unhealthy state. I get no logs here for that. 
I guess it's just aware that it's an unhealthy state, which is probably fine. I don't think that Docker is going to auto rebuild it, but uh, having the health check is, is good. So if I use something like ECS, uh, I could have that double, I can have it run the health check and then it would, it would tell me if things are going well. Okay, so let's do this again. But this time, um, this time let's create a route for it and it should be up and healthy. So, I don't think we need to take in anything. Um, this is just going to return a status. So I just want us to return, I don't want anything to be returned. I just want a 200 okay. Okay, so I can return a status code like this. Okay, so health check and then uh, serve. Okay, so bind address. Oh, no, this one. So routes. route uh, okay so path I'll check service is going to be get I'll check like that okay you're happy here um, all right so I have my server running locally here on port no, this is trunk. Um, you're running locally here. Okay, so I should be able to hit 3,000 health check. I get a 200 okay empty body response. That's uh, that's fine. That's good. Uh, then in the Docker file, I want you to hit slash health check. Doc uh, cargo run. We do all that stuff. Uh, you're going to build this. This is fine. Okay, so after five seconds. Five seconds after it starts the cargo run command, then go and do the thing. Okay. So then you're here to Docker. You're still unhealthy, right? You're still unhealthy. Ooh, interesting. Okay, so that's also something I've been thinking about. I noticed that there was a stop signal. Set the system call signal to use to send the container to exit. Signals can be valid unsigned. 
So what is the control C stop signal? Yeah, but what, what is that? Is that the nine or is it? Is it just SIGINT? Is that legal? Okay, so stop signal, SIGINT, tell it to stop. All right, well, now because I'm in this state where I can't actually stop it, I'm gonna come over to this terminal here and we're gonna do a docker stop Jolly Carver. Okay, you stopped. Let's rebuild you again. We get to go through all the fun of waiting for this again. I guess I guess because it's a it's a Docker con image, it doesn't have any of the creates.io stuff. So that's why it takes so long to update. It's doing like an initial sort of like, hey, what what even what even do I have? Okay, so that's built. Let's now do the next thing. We're gonna docker run. Uh, I wanna do exactly the same thing. So port 3001 to internal 3000. Uh, we'll do the latest. That's all running, that's fine. And side of view, we should see. Okay, health check is starting. And within five seconds, it should... Well, maybe it's 30 seconds. Um, wait for five seconds, then 30 seconds later? Kind of surprised the way it's not healthy yet. It's up 47 seconds. Okay. So our Docker file is saying start period five seconds. Interval at 30 seconds. Timeout 30 seconds. It's 
So it's been up for over a minute now. Hmm. Uh, can I get this in a new request? So we'll go to 3001 health check. Yeah, so we get the 200 okay. So that seems to be working. Unhealthy, okay. So that, that failed to run. So before I exit out, we're gonna do our exec uh, trick to get in there and like see what about that command doesn't it like? So let's do a docker exec uh, dash it for silly McCarthy uh, bin bash. Uh, and I want to do a, okay. So inside this docker container, I want to do a curl dash F HTTPS, no. Host thousand slash uh, I'll check. So that's a zero. So that that should be successful. If I try to go to somewhere else, four oh four not found, which would then be a any other exit error. So I got I got a zero, so that should work. So curl dash f two here. So uh is my sh dot c wrong? Wait. Uh, let's see. Curl dash f HTTP localhost 3000 slash health check. That all seems correct. Let's let's Google this. Uh, so this would be um, Docker health check curl. Docker health checks. Why you shouldn't use curl. Um, okay. That uses wget. Oh, this one doesn't use the the dash h command. So let's let's see this. Why shouldn't I use curl? This is from 2017. So I don't know. There's also Windows. Okay, so problems. Uh, one, in Linux images, you need to have curl available. Well, it's available for me already. I checked it. I don't need it to work, work on Windows. Don't worry about that. Okay, I don't need to write an entire program for health checks. It's fine. Curl is fine. Uh, so let's try changing this to not this style. So uh, we'll do shell command styles. That's going to be just curl dash f. That. Um, okay, so let's try this again. 
Um, now I'm I'm really curious. If I X out of you, and then I come here, and if I do a Control C, ah, didn't didn't work. What do I need to do to get uh, Control C to work in a Docker? So Docker, uh, so like image, um, handle, Control C. It's pretty much exactly the same as mine. Oh, so they suggest we use an entry point for this. Mm, okay, we can use an entry point. Then it runs as if it's a command, and then control C should work. Okay. Also, sig int, and then there's also sig term. We can do sig term too. We can try this next. Um, okay, so there's you. We're just using this style now. All right, one more. One more try. Oh, I'm not in. I want to be in you. So once I get this up and running, though, the next steps will be to get this deployed out. You'll be hi. Will be. I hear I hear Zilby meowing, but I don't see him. Hold on, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go check how he is. I think he's he's meowing up a storm. So, we'll go see what's what's up. Um, let's see. Uh, Vanta. Oh, it's too loud. It's too loud for you. I'm sorry. Uh, what process do I go through? You're done with that. Um, what process do I go to go through when thinking of new projects to work on? I have a huge backlog of projects. Um, so when I'm when I'm thinking of working on something, I I guess like the, there's a there's a couple different things I go through. First of all, if it's something that I already have in my backlog, 
uh, I just sort of like at that point refine it. So I just like, okay, what's the point of this project? What is successful for this project? What is like, what are metrics that I can use to like determine whether or not this project has been successful? And this is for like learning projects too. So like the metrics might be, I can now do this on my own. Like the, I'm looking for like this specific skill set. Um, which then helps me like really dial down so I don't do too much. Uh, for something else, um, like uh, like a project like this, where it's like actually going to be more of like a businessy type use case, uh, then my definition of done is like okay, this has to be deployed out to the real world. It has to have HTTPS certificates. It can't cost more than you know some amount per month. Uh, I need to um, I need to have testing set up and uh, I need to um, like have logging set up and all of those other things. So it becomes more complex, uh, but uh, I still try to define that pretty well. Does that, does that help? Is that an answer? Um, now, when I'm thinking of projects to work on, I don't usually sit down and think like, hey, what project do I want to work on? It's usually I keep, um, I have like a notebook on my computer uh, I'm, that's also shared on my phone. And then if, uh, whenever I run into any kind of like pain points, um, I write down, oh man, wouldn't it be better if this thing could do X? And then that's, uh, that's essentially a new application. So either maybe it could be a script that does X for me or sort of like updates X, or maybe it could be, you know, a new competing app with whatever I was using that also does X. Um, that's the idea then. And then it sits there for a very long, sorry, a very long time until eventually I get to work on it, um, which may be never. Oh, fun time. Um, okay, so I have you running now. So let's now run you again. And let's see if you're a little bit happier. Okay, so you're running, uh, let's come to here and we'll do our Docker PS. Okay, so health starting. So wait for like five seconds or so. And still in the starting phase, so I'm, uh, let's see, how many, how many times? It's three retries with an interval of 30 seconds and a timeout of 30 seconds, that's what, um, three minutes before it would decide, determine that it's, uh, it's dead? Ooh, it's healthy. Okay, so that worked. Um, that worked. So it's now we're in a healthy state. Uh, now if I control C, so the control C part still isn't working, so we need like an entry point or something like this. So, okay. But we're we're moving forward. So we want to do a Docker. Um, is it not the lack of the dash T? I wonder, I wonder if that's it. Um, that might, that might be it. I guess I could just do a dash D. Uh, for daemon mode, and then it would it would be a little bit easier. Um, also, hello, S2. So let's do a Docker stop. Vigorous North Cup. Um, okay, so. The last thing I want to try is for development mode is do I want a separate Docker uh, file for dev versus like deployment? Um, I'm thinking that I do. I'm thinking that I do. But out of curiosity here, well, actually, it's it's guaranteed that I that I want something that's different, don't I? Yeah. Okay. So here's this Docker file for this. Um, I want to create another one. We're gonna call 
Docker file dev. But you don't know what type you are, so you are type Docker file. You are immediately okay. So we'll do from Rust latest. Um, I don't want to do an add. Our command is going to be a cargo watch. Um, it's been long enough that I've forgotten how to use cargo watch. Um, let's see. It's cargo watch. Uh, okay, so dash X is cargo commands to execute on changes. So like check or run. And then dash S for a shell command to run. So in this case, I just want a dash X. Um, and then run. So rerun this over again. Um, homeless, hello. Uh, when are you going to record video with Dan Levy? Um, you know, I haven't done a, a uh, one with that for a long time. I haven't actually like heard from him in a while. Um, he he got so he became a CTO of a company, and then just got crazy busy. Every once in a while, I see him say hello like online, but I haven't seen him in person in a long time. So, I um, that's a good reminder. I should reach out and uh, say hi to him and see see how he's doing. Make sure make sure he's uh, he's staying sane. Um, but yeah, it would be, it would be great to do another video. Uh, I don't necessarily have like a topic that I want to ask him right now, but, uh, he is, he is very smart, very good. He has a lot of, uh, knowledge and experience. So the answer to that is unknown. Okay. So I'm not going to do copy. Um, now I could do this as an entry point as opposed to a command. That could be interesting too. Yeah, let's switch this over to an entry point. So entry point. Our executable is now going to be cargo watch x run. So this is always going to happen no matter what, even if I overwrite it. Um, uh, okay. I don't know. I'm, I'm going back and forth on this. I like the ability to overwrite it, sort of like go in and, and take a look at it uh, in the case that like something else is going weird with it. Um, okay, ENV, we have port B3000. Um, expose port 3000. Is that using cargo watch? Is that the default rust image? No, it's not. So we're gonna have to we're gonna have to install that. Uh, okay, so now health check. I I'm gonna disable health check for the dev image. Okay, so run. We're gonna want a cargo install watch. Uh, no, it's cargo watch. I don't think there's anything else I need with this. Uh, shell, stop signal. Well, 
volume. Okay, so volume I want slash code. And then worker slash code. Okay, so. You at the bottom. Uh, so set the environment variable. Okay, so expose port 3000. I'll check none. Get up there. Uh, run cargo install this. This is a global, so that's fine. Um, okay, then we say like, okay, we're gonna have this volume slash code, switch CD into that, and then run this inside of there. Okay, so then if I do that here, I'm gonna now do a cargo build dash T Zerker. So this is gonna be just, um, I guess this is gonna be like just a, a run, like a, a, a like rust, rust dev is what I'll call it uh, as an image. Um, and then there is, I can maybe tell it a different Docker file name. Cargo build, what am I doing? Docker build. Wrong, wrong command, okay. Uh, I want the Docker file. There it is, dash F file string, name of the Docker file. Okay, so that, that's what I wanna do. So I wanna do Docker build dash T. So the name of this is going to be um, cargo, uh, just a rust dev, maybe um, dash F is Docker file dev, and then dot for where it's going to find it. That's going to just install cargo watch, but pretty much nothing else in here. Um, let's see, volume slash code is folder code on the container. Uh, where does this map to on your computer? Um, so by doing the volume slash code, it's actually gonna create the directory inside of the image um, named slash code for this. I like to use slash code. A lot of people like to use slash data or just slash like some other things. Um, the code makes the most sense to me in this context. Uh, and then I'm gonna use a command when I do Docker run to map a folder on my computer to slash code inside of uh, the uh, the image. Uh, which we'll see as soon as it updates and installs this. So uh, for this one, I shouldn't need to rebuild the image too often. Uh, so the idea for deployment would be in GitHub Actions, I would do a Docker build um, using the main Docker file. So this one right here. And then that would be pushed up to whatever, whatever repository I want to use. I might use Docker, um, Docker Hub. I could also use um, Amazon, Amazon Container Repository, ACR. Uh, what is the purpose of it? Is it better than copy somehow? So copy will at um, at uh, image build time, copy the files over into the image and then run stuff there. It a volume allows me to have a live view of like the code on my computer inside of it. So it, it significantly slows things down. So it's not recommended for production use, but for dev use, this is great. So even though it's slightly slower, it allows me to guarantee 
um, and in certain environments is running. So it's basically replacing like, I don't know if you, if all of you remember, like Vagrant was like huge for a while uh, because it would allow you to basically say, okay, this is the environment that we're all in. We have our Vagrant box on our local system. It has like the exact correct version of um, like, you know, uh, Rust installed. It has the exact version of like all these other tools that we have and just install, like run this script and bam, your system, regardless of what you've got is, is good to go. So it's kind of replacing that. I keep on forgetting how painful it is installing. Now on, on a Mac and on Windows, uh, because the kernel is different than, um, than Linux. Like, it, we're, we're not running like a Linux kernel here. Because of that, everything Docker is slower uh, because it runs in a VM. Uh, on Linux, it just shares your processor and your kernel and all that stuff. So it's super fast with everything. It's basically as fast as um, as as your computer is. Uh, not quite so much here, but when I run this on the server, that means we're gonna get speed there. Um, yeah, on Windows, it's basically running on WSL, unless of course you don't have WSL installed, then it installs its own VM behind the scenes, which is, yeah, it's a, it's a thing. Um, okay, so. Uh, we have this here, so we have a Docker image for this. So if I do a Docker images, we can see I just created this Rust dev, I think is what it's called. Here it is, Rust dev. So I wanna do a Docker run. Um, I don't need to, so a, a daemon mode for this one is probably fine. I want to name this. Uh, this is going to be um, Rust. Uh, specifically, this is going to be the platform backend. So, platform backend dev. Uh, Daemon does mean background. Yes, absolutely. So, I'm going to get my shell back after I, I run this command. Okay, so those are my two big things. So I don't want to use dash I or T for this one. Um, I'm going to give it a port. So I want a port. I actually have like 3000 running here. So let's let's give it like a port 3001 to port 3000 internally. Um, okay, dash V for volume. So I'm currently in platform backend, this folder here. So I want to share all of this stuff into slash code. So I'm going to do, I, I like to use quotes, but that's optional. Um, I'm going to do, okay, my current working directory, go to slash code. Um, I don't think there's anything else. So run the Rust dev image latest and then run whatever command it wants to run is is good to go so i hit okay here is the id of the container so i can now do a docker ps here's my platform backend dev it's up there's the command it's running i can do logs so i can do uh, docker logs that it's compiling but i have a link here so it should be um it should well it's got to do the compile once because the target is uh it's now running in a ubuntu linux sort of vm thing so all the uh everything else is sort of like different um uh, what is it it's like dash dash watch Follow, I want dash F for follow.
All right, so now I can just follow what's happening here and wait until it's actually fully up and running. Can you do something like in Docker file volume dot slash hello code? No, I don't think you can. Um, I've never I've never seen that pattern in a Docker file. In a Docker compose file, absolutely you can. But the Docker file itself is supposed to be a little bit more generic than that. So basically you're just saying what the volume is that is available to be attached to. Okay, so we're compiling platform backend. So we're almost there. So you notice the big difference here is that it's at runtime that this compile happens now, as opposed to at, uh, at image creation time. Any second now? I don't think this is up and running um, yet, but we can we can check. Oh, there it is. Okay, so now it's up and running. Uh, so I can come to this new request, 3001 health check. That's up and running, that's hitting here. Uh, if I just do this debug, just wanna go to log user agent. All right, I see I see this uh, hit out here. Uh, because you use container server, they want to add volume to store data generated by Docker container. How can you map this then? Can't give it params when running the Docker container. The service does this server equals service. So generally what you would do is you'd, you'd um, give the volume for like a, a folder in your disk drive. So if you if you have like the folder in disk drive and you know somewhere else is gonna be dumping things into there, then that's sort of like, it's kind of what I've done uh, here. Uh, so I don't know if, I don't know if I'm understanding the problem enough. But yeah, if, if if you know where the server is going to be dumping things, then that's what you volume it. But you give it the host location when running the Docker image as params. Well, you can, or um, you can use environment variables and then override the environment variables at runtime. Basically, it all depends upon the application running inside the container. If you have it set up at image time, then that needs to be generic enough to handle different run times, which is the reason why I'm using two different Docker files here for two different images, essentially. The container service does this for you. So in that case, you might need to create another Docker file to wrap around the container service to sort of handle this for you. Um, Possibly, or you might need to like just create your own image and like that's happened to me sometimes where it's like the images that are official just don't do it right the way I want it to. They don't have the flexibility. And so I have to like just do it myself, which is a pain, but possible. You can you can probably figure out how to use like run commands, like just set everything up, but not actually run it. But okay, so I've got this running here. Now, if I want to make a change to this, like let's say I don't debug here, um, or maybe I debug and I say something like, user agent, something like that. If I hit save, cargo watch reruns and opens this again. So now if I hit this again, 
Oh, it's it's compiling. This is now the problem of using watch inside of a Docker container. We need the volume because Docker container is immutable. Um, yes, I don't know if immutable is, is the correct word for this. Uh, the image is immutable. The, um, the container is mutable, but as you also say, the data inside the container is uh, is lost unless you have a volume that connects it somewhere else. So you can use a data volume, and then it's, I mean, that's still gonna be a problem though. Uh, oh man, that was a long recompile time. But there we go. I've, that, that sort of works. That sucks. Um, compile time, so like max, especially the new M1 uh, chips, um, even like the M1 Maxes, they're, they're very slow with uh, Docker volumes. This might be a little bit too painful to do dev in, but uh, the option is here for me if I want to. The This one for building the Docker file for uh, deployment, this should be fine and, and should work for us. Now, let's see, other things that I want, I want like a sec deployment. Um, to sort of like set everything up for dev purposes, I would now probably outside of Brooks Builds to sort of like get everything going. I have this Docker Compose file. Um, Oh yeah, and this has like data less. Okay, this has sec. Uh, does cargo restart? Is it watching some files and when they are saved, it auto restarts and compile? Yes, yes, absolutely. So the way this works is that we're using a tool called um, Cargo Watch. Cargo Watch is a really cool tool. So what it does is um, I install it and I installed it in the image. And then when I um, when I run it, I can do cargo watch and then dash X uh, tells it, okay, run this like cargo command whenever any of the files in the directory that I'm in change. So when I hit save, it detects that the you know the files have a new uh, timestamp and so then it's like okay let's rerun whatever command I gave it which in this case was run so car a new cargo run it is normally really fast but the recompile can be a little bit slow you can also set it up to do a shell command instead of like a normal command so just for interesting other things if you want to use it outside of just like an actual um, rerunning a server okay um docker compose we're not running on foreground maybe it's faster instead of daemon mode it, no, that won't really change things much. Like as far as Docker is concerned, uh, daemon mode versus foreground mode is pretty much exactly the same thing. Um, we'll, um, I mean, we could try, but I, I don't think that it's that different. Uh, what's really cool though, is that if I change this and I remove the image, so, um, Docker PS A. So here we have. Here is my uh, platform backend dev. So let's say I stop this. So that's um, oh uh, Docker stop platform backend dev.
I'll remove it and then I'll restart it again uh, in IT mode. Uh, Docker run. So instead of dash D, let's do IT um, Actually, I don't need IT. Uh, I mean, I can, but it's not really going to change anything. Uh, so if I do that. Okay, it's running. Then I want to. Yeah, I don't I don't really need IT. I was like, I was thinking about something else and then I, yeah. All right, so let's uh, let's use our agents. Let's add more semicolons into this. So hit save. As you can see, it's still really slow with this recompilation. This is the uh, sort of like the virtual machine uh, penalty that we're paying with Docker uh, because we're on we're on a Mac and and this would be the same thing on Windows. We would not get this penalty if we were on Linux. Here we go, and it's it's finally it's finally done. Ugh. that's a that is a terrible terrible compilation time, which is not the actual one. So like if I if I make a change here, so let's do this. Let's uh um let's like try here. Uh, we'll do a cargo watch um dash x run. Uh, Wolfie Dev, hello. Uh, it's going pretty well. Um, it's uh, it's Fourth of July here, so it's a nice holiday. Uh, okay, so we're we're running this one. Let's make another. You know, add add some more of these. If I hit save, that's how much fast that's how much faster it is. If I don't use Docker, so a little bit faster. Just, just a teeny tiny bit faster. So um, it's still compiling here. Uh, perks of working for a US business. Oh, very nice, very nice. Um, yeah, we have some people who are working uh, outside the United States and um, they uh, we're, we're giving them the day off too. They can celebrate our independence as well. Uh, all right, so yeah, that's that's pretty terrible. But um, I'm probably going to bring the stream down soon because I do actually have some things I need to do to do today. Um, and I, I didn't want to stream for too long so I can get those done. Uh, man, that one minute, three seconds, one minute, 36 seconds, 52.12 seconds. I added in like three characters. Ah. Uh. Point, point 0.8 seconds. Oh my gosh, yeah. Okay, so um, what did we do today? Uh, so in review, uh, we spun up a, um, well, we did some research of how to like find what the user agent is. Uh, and we grabbed that, we spun up an Axum web server. Uh, I created another folder in the mono repo here called our platform backend. And it has uh, two two routes in it. It has a health check route, and it has this um, log user agent handler route, which right now just does a debug for it. So it just logs locally to the console. Um, 
I'm in the future, we're going to set up a Docker Compose uh, so we can have uh, a SEQ, a SEC uh, logging server. And then I need to figure out, um, and then perhaps this stuff that I can do off stream, uh, I need to figure out where to deploy this. So like if I use ECS, uh, for example, uh, Elastic Container Service with Fargate, um, where would I want to keep the the log files? Would I need to also spin up a like an EC, I uh, can't remember what it's called, like a file system, ECF, EC something? Uh, to, um, uh, I guess it would be E Elastic. I could send it to CloudWatch 2, potentially. Um, yeah, that, that actually might work. I, I could potentially send all these things to CloudWatch and then use CloudWatch to sort of review and, and look at that. I'll have to look through to see if, like what what options I have with CloudWatch or do I want it elsewhere. Um, I'm, not, I'm not exactly sure. Maybe, maybe. That might, that might be a good one to, to choose. Because if it's CloudWatch, then I can figure that out. Yeah, and CloudWatch has a free tier forever as long as I don't go over a certain amount of space. So that's that's also something to, to keep in mind. So I could potentially use CloudWatch for that. That might be good too. So... CloudWatch, however, so the, the one major negative of CloudWatch is it is extremely proprietary to, uh, to AWS. So uh, with a lot of things, you're not sort of locked into AWS. CloudWatch, you are, um, but it, it is free. So there's that. So I'm going to I'm going to consider and think about that. Uh, so tomorrow may or may not be more gloomy to sort of like set up CloudWatch uh, and set up and like actually deploy this out. Uh, and then like have this log somewhere. And I don't know exactly how to log this um, to CloudWatch. So we'll have to figure that out too. That will be probably starting tomorrow. I'll be back at 7 a.m. or so mountain time. Uh, and then we go for about an hour and a half or so before, before I have to head off for, for the rest of my day. Uh, so with that, let's see. Um, I don't have anybody I'm following that's doing web dev type stuff. Uh, so get, I'm just going to go ahead and end the stream. Um, free with lock-in included. Uh, exactly. Exactly. All right. Have a great rest of your day, everybody. And uh, I'll see you all next time. Bye.